There's been a huge sell-off in emerging markets in South Africa's markets and currency being particularly hard hit. So what strategies should you be looking at now to look at rand hedges, at passive investing? Should you be looking at active managers or should you be taking your money out the market and going all Greek and hiding it all away? Andy Pile is from Investment Solutions and John Cairns from RMB to discuss what is behind the sell-off where you can make some money. You've been gold going traveling around the world and as the rand has depreciated, uh, costing lots and lots of money and more and more money, but talking to fund managers everywhere um, and trying to encourage them or listen to them about South Africa. Wh which is it? You know, it's quite interesting, Bruce, with the sell-off that we've seen that managers are actually now thinking emerging markets are looking a little bit more attractive but at the same time are still going completely underweight South Africa. South Africa is not one of the um, best loved destinations at the moment. So global managers are underweight South Africa equities, underweight the RAND. Um, and you talk about other asset classes. In fact, it's a beta desert out there. That's one of the, one of the global managers refer to it as that. What is a beta desert? The desperate search for yield is coming up with nothing. Okay, so, so, and w which is what is making other emer emerging markets more attractive, courtesy of the sell-off. But we're missing out, John Kenson. That's been played out quite spectacularly in the currency markets. Well, yes. I mean, okay, certainly the RAND has come under pressure. It was the whole reflation trade, the sell-off in global bonds. We came under pressure. Fears over the Fed hikes were obviously a big story today. Uh, but it is interesting, actually. Over the past couple of months, the RAND's actually outperformed some of the other emerging market currencies in which we typically compare ourselves to. I think the, the big difference here is simply the divergence in interest rates. The Saab's looking to hike, everyone else is st still cutting. We are getting that support. Still our yields looking very attractive. Mm, I mean, Morningstar uh, re last week, I think it was, published uh, a report giving us a D-grade rating. It's, it's upset ASISA, the Association of Savings and Investments, South Africa, saying Morningstar's got it completely wrong. But if this is what global fund managers are telling you, that South Africa is so at the bottom of the investment class that they're not even looking at it, we need to do a little bit of introspection eh? I agree. I mean, I think this degrade doesn't surprise um, us, given the discussions that we recently had. And even the recent RAND strength, I think that over the long term, managers are saying that the RAND is going to certainly trade on the cheaper side of fair value. Um, so there may be some short-term gains to be found, but mm. um, there's far more negativity than positivity. I, I, need, I yeah. need to pick you up on something there. on the cheaper side of fair value. It's on the big 50% off discount side of fair value, isn't it, John Ken? No, I mean, no, no, no. Historical no, value, put it that way. No, no, uh, pr probably not actually, Bruce, because while dollar rand's gone from six all the way up to 12, which sounds like we've depreciated rapidly, what you actually see is inflation rates have been eating away at that competitiveness gain. So, yes, the rand's weakened, but so have wages gone up. So the net gain in terms of competitiveness has been very very small. So at this stage, our estimates at RMB is the RAND is possibly 6%, 7% undervalued. It's not a lot in the scheme of things, you know. On the extremes, it usually gets to 15%. Horror, nobody undervalued. likes watching horror movies at 9 o'clock at night here, yeah, John Kens. Nobody wants a horror story. But yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the prognosis because there are a lot of people who talk about, and you look at graphs of the RAND, and you look at the, at the blowout of 2002, mm. and you look at the, the blowout in 2007, 2008 with the, with, with, with the fi financial crisis. It looks like we simply climb those mountains, we then come back down again, we climb the mountains, we come back down yeah, again. So We're climbing a bigger mountain now. Yeah, but, but, but don't discount the possibility of the RAND coming back. I mean, it's, those mountains you speak about are really extraordinary. Okay, 2001, we traded to 1384. Are we getting close? And we got back to 560. 1384, 560. Yeah. We got to 1188 and we got back to 6. And each, each of the previous mountains, the RAND's halved in value. It's pretty hard now. I think all of us are going to come struggle to suggest a scenario where dollar RAND's going to go back to 6. But history does show the RAND can pull back very aggressively yeah. Eventually, eventually. Uh, absolutely, but fund yeah. managers don't look at history, they look at the future and they look at investability and they're telling us we're not investable. What are the primary things they're concerned about, Anne? Look, I think the, the, the macro environment is very different to previous um, eras or, or RAND strength eras that, mm. that John mentions. You know, we've got ESCOM is a big, big issue that, that managers are flagging to us. You know, simple things like the visa issues, you know, creating an untenable environment in South Africa for investors to trade, creating an untenable environment for tourists to come to South Africa. Mm -hmm. All these types of things are creating such problems. You know, the, the short-termism of, of our 
policy politicians, makers, policy makers, of our policy policy makers mm. creates creates an environment that is just not attractive. You know, you look at a Mauritius versus a South Africa, and and you know we say Mauritius really has got no natural resources. It's got nothing working for it except for some good sunshine. But then you look at what it's done in terms of making or creating an environment that is conducive to trade to growth. And I think this is where South Africa has got a lot to learn. So, so mm. and I'll just challenge you on that a little bit. So we, we all know that all the negatives, but it's, it's a question of mark about do those negatives really impact massively on the inflows into South Africa? We at RMB, we did a study. Mm -hmm. We looked at total inflows into emerging markets and then tracked inflows into South Africa alongside yeah. those. And what you find is a very, very high correlation. In other words, a rising tide lifts all boats. And then we looked at, well, does that hold for all the emerging markets? And the only ones where we can find it really breaks down is when you're really, really, really terrible. Okay, we're not talking South Africa terrible. Yeah. We're talking Ukraine. You're talking Venezuela. You're talking uh, Argentina. Uh, 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 so uh, things have to be really bad. Investors have got a pretty thick skin. No, it's not, yeah, so, so maybe investors might be a little bit underweight South Africa. But you're getting almost a trillion dollars moving across into emerging markets. If we get 10% of that instead of 12%, big deal. We're still, we're still getting a, a huge, if, huge if amount of influence. you look at what the South Africa or what the investors are buying in South Africa, you're looking at rand hedges. You're looking at companies that are deriving most of their earnings outside of South Africa. Sure, so yeah. yes, it looks like a South Africa story, but if you delve down into it, it's not a South Africa story. F fair enough. The, the exception there would be on the bonds, obviously. We, we're seeing yeah. good, good Good inflows once yeah. again after the selling out mm -hmm. in May. And of course, you still got the 8% yield here, yeah? or 8.5%. Uh, and, 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 and those are going to improve because, I mean, the Reserve Bank is looking at interest rates and going, you know what, we can't sustain interest rates as low as they are. We, we're going to have an inflation problem coming through courtesy of this weak currency. They are going to be proactive, if not at the, the next MPC meeting, certainly yeah. the one after that. But, but the risk we have there, Bruce, is with the potential of, of bond inflows, if we have a credit downgrade, South Africa gets yeah. kicked out the credit, the but city we're weekly. 18, we're at least 12 to 18 months away from a credit, potential credit downgrade, and the one person oh. who is more yeah. cognizant of this than anyone else in the country, even you guys, mm. is Ntlanta Nene. Yes. He may be the only person in the cabinet yeah. who's that cognizant yeah. of it. Uh, he may be the lone voice in it. Uh, um, but the, I, I get a sense that you know, it may be out of his control, but he's working hard to, to, to curtail spending yeah, as much so, as possible. So, yeah, we, uh, we could get a downgrade by Fitch in December. We probably will. But you're right, Bruce, we're not going to lose investment grade status. And look, there are a lot of other emerging markets out there that are also struggling. I mean, we, we tend to forget that. And remember that amazing statement by Moody's uh, two, three weeks ago? They said in their statement on South Africa, governance in South Africa has deteriorated but it has deteriorated by less than in other emerging <laughs> markets. So we're bad when everyone else is with. So maybe we're we shouldn't be- We're better of a bad bunch. Exactly, maybe we shouldn't be proud of that, but it no. does show there's a lot of other but concerns we, we, out there. We do so much navel gazing, and because we live here, and because we expect more of ourselves, and we expect more of our policy makers, and we expect, <laughs> frankly, uh, we, we expect more of our investment mm. community than we often get, yeah. we get massively disappointed. Now, that then is reflected. So you have somebody like Johan Rupert, he says at his last AGM, it's coming, increasingly difficult to defend politicians overseas. Well, stop defending politicians and sell the country. Um, you know, mm -hmm. perhaps we're just a little bit too tied to our own narrative, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Um, you know, so maybe you know, we need to be more, oh, I sound like Gwede Montage, we need to start being a bit more patriotic, uh, but not pro-politic, perhaps. Well, yeah. so, so Tony Leon wrote a very good uh, article in today's Business Day, and he started off saying, he always goes there and he, he expresses, South Africa is never the best of the bunch and we're never the worst of the bunch. You know, we always somehow manage to trundle yeah. through, get through it. Mm. But then he concludes, and he's talking about the whole Sudanese issue, and he concludes, but now he's starting to doubt his own narrative. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the al thing is really yeah. interesting, because here's Omar al -Bashir. He comes into South Africa. Um, there is an ICC International Criminal Court a warrant of arrest out in his name. We're signatories to the Rome Treaty, which created mm. the ICC, and we go... Let's just have a recess in court, guys, while we think about this. And Al Bashir scuttles off to Bardakov <laughs> Air Force Base, doesn't put his name on the passenger list, and off he goes. A day later, somebody is telling the tales about South African soldiers being held hostage in Darfur, and that was the reason. Yeah. I mean, if we can't uphold our own rule of law, that is 
for many people, and uh, the Twitter sphere is often a good barometer of, uh, of something, I'm not mm -hmm. sure what, but people are cross about that. But you know, Bruce, I do these, these global DD trips two times a year, with the DD and trip. I've done them the due diligence yeah, trips thank you. to meet yeah. with the asset managers. We've done them yeah. two times a year since 20, 2009. Mm -hmm. And honestly, after this most recent trip, it really does become far more difficult to defend mm -hmm. in an environment like we're facing. You know, the, yeah. the, as, as Tony Leon says, it's, it's becoming increasingly difficult to be as patriotic as one would like to be. Mm. No, absolutely. John, you do, want to make a point? Yeah, do, do, do these foreign investors raise the, the democracy issue, or is it really just focused on the state of the economy? They definitely raise the democracy issue. Okay, so it's starting to worry them the whole It's certainly starting to worry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bruce, sorry, I just wanted to chirp you there. I mean, um, threats have been made to sol our soldiers, but if you think anyone can defend <laughs> themselves, it should be our soldiers. Look, we yeah. African yeah. Republic a couple of years ago, <laughs> yes, we did yes. come under quite a lot of duress. <laughs> I mean, the guys aren't perfectly <laughs> equipped. They're not, uh, they're not the best, they're not the best uh, supplied soldiers in the world. They, they're mm. doing a difficult job in hostile circumstances. Mm. Mm. I'm not so sure I, I believe this, this uh, an element of spin there. The reporter who wrote the story is incredibly good, but yeah. everybody can be spun from time to time. Time mm -hmm. will tell, of course, the truth yeah. does come yeah. out in these things. It's got to, I once had a, a discussion uh, with, with the he former head of Gibbs, Nick Benadell, and I said to him, Nick, don't be so depressed. It's got to break before it gets fixed. And he was quite cross with me. And he said, it mustn't break. And I said, you know what, it might have to. Do you think it has to? I don't <laughs> think it can break. You know.